let's talk about what Wild Shape does for you, the Druid. Hello everyone, and welcome back down here to the Gamer's Den with me, your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire, growing ever more scruffy and surprisingly here today, getting this video out on time because, well, thanks to insomnia, I didn't get to sleep like I was supposed to, so I'm doing this in the wee hours of the morning before I head off to work. Now, what we are going to talk about today when regards to the Druid is what exactly Wild Shape does for you specifically. I covered some of what it does, but I didn't really dive into Beast Shape, Elemental Body, or Plant Shape and the effects that those spells have as part of Wild Shape. So we're going to go ahead and rectify that particular issue today. Although we are only going to be diving into Beast Shape, don't have quite enough time to cover Elemental Body and plant shapes, so those will have to be for Saturday's episode. So for now, that's what we're going to dig into. But remember, if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. Or if you've already gone on ahead and listed yourself on such an incredible roster of legendary heroes, then go on down to hit the like button and share the video far and wide. But now, we'll actually talk about what Wild Shape does, specifically for you, the prospective druid. Now. Wild Shape functions as the Beast Shape spells as you level, eventually adding in Elemental Body and Plant Shape spells as we had talked about before. Beast Shape is going to be overall what you're diving into. Elemental Body, early on, is going to have some benefits, but with mixed results, it's not until you get into the larger, more Elder Elemental forms that you are really going to start putting the hurt on people. But Plant Shape overall is just not going to be great. Now, normally this only lasts for one minute per level. However, as Wild Shape, these effects will last one hour per Druid level, taking a standard action to transform into and out of your forms, and that doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity, which all the way around is fantastic. You get a lot of longevity out of this ability despite your limited number of uses, and the fact that this doesn't provoke an attack of opportunity just adds icing to the cake overall. Now, the thing is with this is that the animal form must be one that the druid is familiar with, making the knowledge nature skill absolutely paramount for you to have maxed out. In terms of mechanics for this ability and just the general roleplay, fluff, fit and feel for the druid because what druid doesn't have knowledge of nature? That'd just be absolutely astounding. But you know to each their own. If you want to cripple yourself, please feel free to do that. Actually, I should point out here really quick, for those of you that may be new and just tuning in, these guides are just that. They're guides. They're not even necessarily optimization. They're optimization adjacent, but I don't, I try not to lean into absolutely being overbearingly effective. I don't necessarily like breaking things however it is important to try to understand mechanically how everything kind of fits and works together and what an ideal build is so that way when you go and actually make a character that fits the overall theme and feel or idea that you might have for them you still know what options are going to be mechanically sound for you but then still play around with things that are maybe more roleplay oriented than they are just pure math and numbers and that's the route i really recommend you go is whatever's going to be fun for you and bring the most joy and roleplaying experience to your game now with all that out of the way let's actually start diving into the nitty gritty here for beast shape one you take the form of any small or medium animal that you're familiar with. If they have the following abilities, then you have them as well. A climb speed of 30 feet, fly of 30 feet with average maneuverability, a swim speed of 30 feet, dark vision out to 60 feet, low light vision, and scent. All the way around a pretty hefty and solid bevy of extra abilities that you get as part of Wild Shape. Now, for a small sized animal, you gain a plus two size bonus to your dexterity and a plus one natural armor bonus. For a medium sized creature, you gain a plus two size bonus to your strength and a plus two natural armor bonus. Now, something to note here is that I still leave dex rated as yellow, just kind of an okay stat that we're going to lean into. 
that can be a little bit misleading. This is only meant to indicate that we're not really super concerned with dex. However, getting a bonus to your dexterity score is still incredibly helpful because dexterity is just that prime stat. It affects your armor class, your reflex saves, your initiative, uh, several of your skills. So it's very, very, very important all the way around. Like no build is ever hurt by putting points into their dexterity score. Well, they're only hurt in the sense that if you're detracting from something else incredibly important, like say a wizard needing to max out their intel, really wanting to max out their intelligence and deciding to instead tank it to pour that into dexterity, that's probably a bad choice all the way around. You're limiting your spells, your spell saves, it's a mess. But again, like I said, mentioned before, I'm not looking to build the absolutely most effective, most optimal and broken build. We're just leaning into something that is going to still be effective while fun and not overly broken. Dex is not something we're going to tank, but we're def definitely not going to sneeze at any bonuses we get along the way. Now, going on from there to Beast Shape 2, you take the form of any tiny or large animal that you're familiar with, and as before, any of the abilities that they have, you can also have as well, which includes a climb speed of 60 feet, fly of 60 feet with good maneuverability, a swim speed of 60 feet, dark vision out to 60 feet still, low light vision, scent, grab, pounce, and trip, all of which are great, and those are some awesome combat abilities to have in there as well. For a tiny size creature, you gain a plus four size bonus to your dexterity score and a minus two to strength, as well as a that remaining plus one natural armor bonus. For a large size creature, you gain a plus four size bonus to your strength, a minus two to your dex, a plus four to your natural armor bonus, making you significantly tanky and dangerous to deal with. Then, moving on to Beast Shape 3, you add diminutive and huge creatures of the animal type. Also allows you to take the form of small or medium creatures of the magical beast type. If the form you assume has any of the following abilities, you gain the listed ability as well. A burrow speed of 30 feet, climb of 90 feet, fly of 90 feet with good maneuverability, swim up to 90 feet, blind sense of 30 feet, dark vision up to 60 feet, low light vision, scent, constrict, ferocity, grab, jet, poison, pounce, rake, trample, trip, and web. Now, jet, I should take a moment to explain there really quick because it's the least self-explanatory out of the bunch. Jet is your swim speed moving backwards in the water in your animal form. So if, if any animal has that particular ability, you get it as well. It's not going to come up super often in a lot of campaigns. I mean, obviously, if you're in, if you somehow end up in a body of water, then great, that's going to actually be incredibly useful. But it's just one that's not going to come up very often unless you are in aquatic themed campaigns. If you're on a ship and you're on a sea going adventure, then of course, absolutely jumps in its usefulness, as do all the aquatic based animal forms that you can take. Now, for diminutive sized creatures, you gain a plus six size bonus to your dex, uh, dexterity score and a minus four penalty to your strength, as well as that recurring plus one natural armor bonus. As a huge size animal, you gain a plus six bonus to your strength, a minus four to your dexterity score, and a plus six natural armor bonus, which is incredible. Now, as a small magical beast, you gain a plus four size bonus to your dexterity score and a plus two natural armor bonus. And then as a medium magical beast, you gain a plus four size bonus to your strength and a plus four natural armor bonus. All the way around, not bad there, though by these levels, you're probably still going to be leaning more into the large and huge sized animals. But still, when those opportunities come up, you'll be happy that you have these in your back pocket. All the way around, pretty damn fantastic. But then we actually want to go over some of the options you have available to you. And remember, it's any 
animal type creature that you're familiar with and then once you get up to beast shape 3 you also expand into magical beasts and the like. Now some of this is subject to your DM's uh, discretion and approval so talk with them first. Don't try to spring an aha gotcha moment on them only for them to deny it, veto it and then have you scrambling to look up some other animal shape and the uh, statistics you would get out of that especially for their attacks. So bear that in mind. But when it comes to the different beast shape forms that you want to take a look at, at beast shape 1 for a medium sized creature, uh, it's the Dynanacus. Dynanacus? Dynanacus? Ah, I always forget how to pronounce that one. Anyways, it is a dinosaur. It has a speed of 60 feet and it gets a number of attacks including two talons dealing 1d8 damage plus your strength modifier, a bite of 1d6, and four claws at 1d4. Now it has two four claws and once you hit level 6 and you get beast shape 2, that's when you unlock its pounce ability which will make this, and still even then, a fairly effective combat form for you to run with. Although, by Beast Shape 2, you're probably still going to look around at switching to other creatures. However, if you're in a space where you're not going to be able to maneuver as effectively, this particular dinosaur at its medium size means you will still be able to keep pace with your allies without having to squeeze and wedge into tight areas and really limit yourself. Also, and then for beast shape 2, we are going to consider looking at the hawk, especially as like a scouting form. It's a tiny sized creature with a land speed of 10 feet, a fly speed of 60 feet, average maneuverability, and its melee attacks, it has two talons dealing 1d4 points of damage. Then for beast shape 2, for your combat form, look at the dire tiger. This is a large sized creature, speed of 40 feet, and for its attacks it has two claws dealing 2d4 points of damage, and grab, a bite dealing 2d6, critting on a 19 to 20, and also has grab, and then it has a space of 10 feet and a reach of 5 feet. This creature is absolutely terrifying, and this is absolutely stunning just bear in mind again your dm may say well no maybe not so you're going to go with the tiger which is going to do a little bit less damage all the way around its claws dealing 1d8 instead but still it's going to be a very very effective form for you and then at beast shape 3 a lot of people recommend the allosaurus or the tyrannosaurus rex certainly venerable legendary options absolutely great for any aspiring druid leaning really heavily into getting up close and personal in a melee but i would recommend and submit to you the war cat it's a huge sized creature with a speed of 50 feet climb speed of 20 feet for its attacks it has a bite that deals 2d6 and has a grab Two claws dealing 1d8, 19, critting on a 19 to 20, and also has the rend effect. It occupies a space of 15 feet, has a reach of 15 feet. Special attacks are pounce, rend with two claws, um, dealing 1d8, trample, and it also has low light vision and scent. Absolutely an incredible creature, and not one that comes up very often. Uh, this is one that I spotted just looking through, uh, looking through different lists on uh, various forums, and I decided to dig into it. And yeah, war cats are amazing. Definitely a very prime combat form for you to lean into. But by no means are they the only ones. The only reason I threw this out there is, like I said, many many people recommend the Allosaurus or Tyrannosaurus once you're around this level, just because they do staggering amounts of damage. But the war cat is different and also just kind of maybe leans a little bit more into a territory that your DM would be more comfortable with, especially if they approve the dire tiger for you at B shape 2. But again, mechanically, this is all based off of your knowledge nature skills. So, uh, so that skill determines what animal type, different types of animals that you might be familiar with. So bear that in mind as you go along as well. But 
what do you think? Go on down to the comments below and let me know your thoughts. Did you like today's video? Did you dislike it? What other animals might you recommend that a druid wild shape into? There's just a whole plethora, a veritable arc full of animals that you could use. So let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. Hit those like or dislike buttons. And remember that if you're new here to the channel, go on down there, hit the subscribe button, and become a regular member here at the Gamer's Den. But with all that said, I've been your host, Jordan, your master of lore and storyteller extraordinaire. Thank you all so very much for your time, and you all have yourselves a good night.